Okay, folks, so we recently looked at uh, Ladybird browser from the Serenity uh, OS project, and today we're looking at Serenity OS. Right, so here we have it. Uh, we're looking at version 1.0 with this revision, uh, and it is the latest version. So, of course, for Serenity OS, which is a independent project that's going on you there's no isos for this uh, available as of yet you have to go and build it uh, yourself and then it eventually loads it up in quemio so taking a look at this of course starting off uh, there's a help section a uh, home directories ladybird browser and a text editor okay and of course looking at the menu quite a couple of apps etc installed and it does have a familiar look to a other previous uh, uh, operating system or at least operating systems of the 90s which is quite interesting a uh, help of course um i was a little bit impatient earlier so it's just opening up this apps from earlier so i'll just minimize that in the meantime to a crash okay so Help audio system, of course, showing you uh, what help it is, and of course where you can go and move around. Uh, don't know if these articles actually load yet, or if they're just spaces for for later. Uh, let's just close that. Okay. Here, of course, we have a normal text editor. Right, uh, a couple of features. I uh, can change the layout, change its font. So, like, hello, all. It is gosh. It's arch using Serenity OS. And of course, we can just go and we can save as. And we can save it to our desktop just as an untitled text document. And we can just close it off. And we could right click here and just open it up a text editor. And there's the file. Talking about right clicking, of course, you can do the usual cut, copy, paste, create an archive, go to its properties. And of course, uh, using the showing you what permissions uh, are available. Obviously, on if your machine that you're running it on has better specs, then of course Serenity will run better as well in its virtual environment. Um, if we right click and go to display settings, right, really similar kind of uh, layout here reminds me of good old of windows in the day so there's a wallpaper so if we we can apply that and of course have a wallpaper themes uh, we can choose Redmond 2000 theme and of course reminds one of Redmond or just the older themes there even a Uh, Mac OS type theme, but uh, let's just go back to default. You can even change uh, mouse settings as well. So your cursor theme, your mouse, your cursor highlights, etc. Fonts, uh, your monitor, workspaces, effects, etc. All there in your display settings. I go to general settings okay we have browser games network terminal keyboard mail so it's like go to network uh, basically giving it a static IP default gateway and what type of IP um, adapter it's using we go to mail um, you know picking up mail from 
specific pop server. And browser settings. Okay, so all these additional settings of Ladybird, which weren't available in the Linux build. Uh, but really great. I mean, system monitor. This uh, reminds me of another performance monitor. And you can see here, it's really not using too much resources right now. Uh, EXT2 is a file system. Hopefully one day that file system is going to get up to EXT4. Um, a partition editor. Okay, I don't have a password for that. Uh, demos, of course, so they have cat dog. Ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good cat dog. And good old eyes. And development, of course, a SQL Studio theme editor profiler. So let's open up a SQL Studio. Ah, it's fantastic they have this. Oh, wow. Pretty, I don't have a SQL uh, Studio database to connect this to. I wonder if it works. That's amazing. What's assistant? Oh. Oh, cool. Just to load stuff, so I guess Ladybird. And of course, the Ladybird browser that we looked at uh, running on Linux. Here it is in its full glory. And this one is actually set to the Mozilla and we have help we have debug like we saw earlier we have settings we can set the home page uh, additional browser settings so following the system theme uh, if we want to do content filtering or blocking certain domains I can view the source, we can go home, vertical tabs. Ah, this has vertical tabs support as well. That's impressive. So let's say we go to Serenity, I was involved. Oh, wow. This browser is even more complete. Uh, than I thought it was. So let's go to CNN.com. I'm only choosing CNN.com because it crashed in when we used it in Linux. So actually, I'm going to load this. Waiting on edge resources. Five resources, seven. Okay, don't think it's actually going to load it. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time in uh, the browser. We've already looked at it. Okay, so moving on, Office, uh, there's a PDF viewer, presenter, spreadsheet. And yep, I guess this is their own built-in spreadsheet tool, which is really quite impressed with additional applications that comes with this that has been built as part of it. Um, so it can do sheets, which I guess is own formatting CSV, 
So one, two, let's do equal to a zero plus b zero. Very nice. So a very simple formula works there. So five, six, let's see if we drag it. Let me drag the formula. Okay, I guess I can't, I can format it. Cool alignment, conditional formatting. Right. Cool, let's just close that. Uh, save as. Uh, desktop workbook.sheets. Yeah, okay, cool. There it is. That's the. Also, a calendar and its own built in PDF UI. See. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay, calendar settings at the end of the week. Add an event, jump to today. So let's jump to today. Test event. Nice. Cool. Okay, media, there's a sound player. I'm not just sure what I can play back. I don't have anything or any test files. So, I'm great to see the option is there. Uh, there's a piano. And actually, sound does work. And I'm impressed. Yeah, and then of course we have under internet mail maps. Just to see if it's actual. Full blown little no client. Yes, let's configure the servers. Oh, I think I crashed this. Yeah. Uh, okay, it takes us back to the setting. Okay, cool. Okay, game, solitaire, flappy bug, snake, chess. This looks familiar. Okay. Let's put that. And then development, of course, Hack Studio, Font Editor, Profiler, Theme Editor, Keyboard Mapper, and the demos. It help run. Okay, so let's take a look at the file manager. See so if we can get the file manager to open. Ah, it's pretty. Kind of open up the file manager. Can debug it and hack studio that. Okay, so let's open up a terminal. Let's give that a few seconds. Don't have course, RCP usage, our memory usage, network, clipboard history, volume, and of course to show the desktop. I believe, uh, from what I've looked at online, you can use uh, Linux commands to navigate the system. But it must be reminded this is not a Linux OS. It's not a Linux distro. It's not a Windows OS. It's not a Mac OS. It's, a, it's taken inspiration uh, from different 
terminologies and technologies, but it is a 100% independent uh, system, which I think is just correct. But yeah, I wanted to test the terminal out of it. So folks, this is for a while. So this is not for everyday usage, but it is great to see the type of work that uh, is being done and being made. Um, you know, I think it's absolutely amazing the type of work the developers have been able to pull off. Um, and I know it started as a one-man project. They've been, for the more recent times, uh, solely dedicated to to this uh, system. And you can see how it's growing and going from strength to absolute strength in more recent times. So I do hope one day it'll be something that I can just install on one of my old machines because it shows a lot of promise. Um, it, it really, really, really does. And it's great to see what they've been able to come up with. Um, so let's take a look on the terminal side. Okay, so if I do clear, that works. If I do a, so a ls to list the a directory. Okay, so Alice works if I do a DIR, which is the Windows equivalent. Okay, so that's that seems to work. So if I do a CD uh, home, okay, so it is also character dependent. So you could th you think of this as very much using the command side of uh, Linux or Nix with the GUI type of the old Windows days, uh, which is an interesting way of doing it. So let's do a mistake. And you can pop commands to it as well. Nice. So, so it actually does that. Who am I? Anonymous. Oh, so some of these are all transpired. Pretty awesome. Ah, right of the file. And... So the way of manipulating files seems to be pretty much the same. That's cool. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for watching. If you use this or know someone who does or you have comments, leave them below. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.